Last week I showed you some wheels I'd made and lots of people commented on them. Thank you very much for your interest and your input. I like reading your comments. I often learn interesting things. Many of you were suggesting the wheels would be better if the treads had a taper on them, which I hadn't included because I was trying to keep things very simple. Of course, tapers should make the wheels run better on the tracks. So you were all quite right. Mind you though, some people were saying they need to have tapers on them, which isn't true at all. But I realized I should have been clearer in the video. I was trying to make really simple wheels for my really simple railway. That's all, cheap and cheerful yet functional, and show you how you could do the same thing if you wanted to. In theory, using just a drill, an angle grinder and a welder. I have this notion that there are hundreds of people beavering away out there in their garden sheds making railway wheels, just like me. <laughs> Surely I'm not wrong. I can't be the only one. Poor lonely Tim. <laughs> anyway, you spurred me on to make another set of wheels, this time with tapered treads. So now we can see how they compare. So instead of a straight pipe shape for the tread, this time we'll need a cone shape. So straight away this design is more complicated and uses more material. This time, if you wanted to make some wheels like this, you'll need an accurate drawing because you need to make this shape and a slip roller because you need to roll it up. And rolling a cone is a little more tricky than a straight circle. It is possible though, if your steel is not too thick. And now of course there are two different size discs for the inserts. I had to experiment to get these to fit where I wanted them to. The theoretical size of a piece cut on the plasma cutter may differ slightly from the real life size. By the way, I was asked how you could possibly cut a circle out with an angle grinder. Well, I say don't bother. Just go with something simple like a hexagon or a pentagon and weld the corners. If anybody compliments the welding, I'll just keep playing. Right. So there you go, tapered tread wheels for that middle of the road feeling. I'm sure they will work better than my first ones, but are they worth the extra effort? Let's find out. I have still no proper bearings and I'm still working on the first wagon, so we'll just have to use the basic frame from last time. First the straight treads. They're fine on the straight track. They touch the edges a bit, but it's no harm. A little bit grindy on the curves, but um, still that's perfectly acceptable for my uses. And the points. I don't know why so many people dislike my clonky points, or kick switch as I've learned they are also known. Yes, of course they are crude and rough, but that's because they're simple and easy to make. I pro promise I'll make a different sort next time, okay? The straight tread wheels go through them with some scraping and complaining as you'd expect. So now let's try the new fancy wheels. 
I do like these too. It's just that they take longer to make. But yes, they do keep the wheels centered on the rails, at least here on the straight track. But what about the curves? They are trying hard, but this curve is just too tight for them to do their thing effectively. There's still grinding going on. And the same with the kick switch. So it's clear that the taper helps on long straight parts of your railway and maybe big wide curves too. But they may not help at all if your railway is full of tight bends and junctions. Are they worth the extra effort? Mm, I'm not sure that they are. At least not for my application anyway. But we'll have another look when the wagon's finished and we can put some load on them. By the way, many of you suggested brake drums might work. Yes, maybe, but not on my rough track because the flanges are too small. And brake discs were suggested too. They certainly look possible, at least when they're this shape, but you would need to grind off a lot of material to make a usable flange on them. And of course, you'd need to find or buy four identical ones. And you'd still need to form and attach two more discs to each of them so that they fit on the axle. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure. If anyone out there has actually made some that work, please let me know and we can all have a look at them. In the meantime, now I'll get on with my wagon. I'll show you that next time.